Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Jurors reach a verdict in the case of three Georgia men accused of murdering Ahmad Arbery. The trio argued it was self-defense. Find out if the jury agreed. Charges are dropped against a Rockford police officer accused of sexual assault. A wording issue means Daniel Basil is in the clear for now. And after the pandemic disrupted many trips last holiday season, Thanksgiving travels back in full swing. You can see proof at a packed Rockford airport. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. Mimi Murphy is off tonight. The jury reaches a verdict in the Ahmad Arbery murder trial in Georgia. Travis McMichael, the man who fired the shots that killed Arbery, was found guilty on all nine counts, including five counts of murder. His father, Greg, was found guilty on all but one count. The third defendant, William Roddy Bryan, was also found guilty. Bryan helped the McMichaels corner Arbery while Arbery was jogging, and he recorded the murder. Defense lawyers argued the men were attempting a citizen's arrest and shot in self-defense. The judge said he would contact the attorneys for the sentencing phase of the trial. Punishment could mean life in prison. We now know the name of the teenage boy shot to death in Rockford yesterday. Investigators say 15-year-old Malachi Lee was gunned down on Ashland Avenue. He passed away at 4.15 in the afternoon. Rockford police have not released any information regarding arrests or suspects. If you have any information, contact Rockford PD. A 21-year-old's recovering after being shot in Rockford this afternoon. It happened just before 1 on Auburn Street. Arriving officers found the man, shot, and rushed him to the hospital. He is expected to survive. Several police cars were on the scene. Drivers were asked to avoid the area during the investigation. While our Eyewitness News crew is on that scene, they heard shots ring out around the corner on Garfield Avenue. Several police cars responded. Detectives could be seen looking into what happened. No word on if anyone was hit. Both of today's shootings took place near the area where the teenager was killed yesterday. Rockford police have not said if any of these incidents are connected. Freeport police are investigating after a teenager walks into a local hospital with gunshot wounds. It happened around 9.15 last night. Officers were called to Freeport Memorial after a 16-year-old arrived with non-life-threatening injuries. Detectives learned the child had been shot on North Willow Avenue. Whoever took the boy to the ER was also at the shooting scene. Investigators say the incident is not connected to any recent shootings in Freeport. If you have any information regarding this case, contact police. Our Rockford police officer accused of rape sees his charges dismissed. Daniel Basil was charged with two counts of criminal sexual assault without consent after he allegedly went drinking with a woman before taking advantage of her against her will. Now, court records show the dismissal happened following a language issue involving the grand jury. The state has filed a motion to reconsider. That will be heard on December 28th. More changes are coming to a Rockford hospital early next year. Mercy Health Rockton will only offer outpatient services. That means inpatient care will be shifted to the Javon Bay Riverside campus entirely. According to one doctor we spoke with, Rockton Avenue only does about two inpatient surgeries a year. Mercy Health administrators say cutting these services from the west side is the best way to meet the community's needs. We're not abandoning it. We're trying to deal with efficiencies. Um, there's a lot of external issues. There's nursing shortages, there's staffing shortages. Uh, the pandemic has created terrible emotional strain. Next month, more than 70 surgical and medical beds will be moved from Rockton Avenue to Riverside. A standby emergency team will be on hand at Rockton during that transition. Travelers are taking to the roads and the skies, heading to their Thanksgiving destinations. Michelle Rave caught up with some families as they prepare to leave for the long weekend. AAA expects 53.4 million Americans to be traveling this Thanksgiving holiday. That's up 13% from last year. I caught up with several travelers who tell me they are excited to escape to some warmer weather. Have you been to Arizona before? We have not. This is our first time going. Stephanie Alva, her husband, and two kids, Harper and Edwin, are all packed up. They have a really fine pool. Yep, we're going to go to the pool. We're I'm going to maybe go to the zoo. zoo. And we're
and we're going to see friends and family hang out at their houses. Passengers at the Rockford Airport lined up early to catch a flight out of town. Going to warm weather, doing a lot of golfing, spend time with my wife and family. Dixon resident Katie Cox says this is the first time her family is traveling over Thanksgiving. We've never traveled for Thanksgiving. We've always stayed home, so this is different for us. I think we're just going to hang out. I think we both rented Airbnbs. We're going to hang out as a large extended family and just hang out in the warm weather. Many flying out to do activities they can't do here right now. We'll be doing uh, probably some pontooning, go pontooning on uh, one of the rivers up in the mountains. and Maybe do some horseback riding in the mountains. So lots of swimming at the pool. Lots of sunshine <laughs> and beer. Yes. <laughs> Mainly seeing friends, but we're going to go to Scottsdale and Phoenix and a few suburbs. I think we're going to Mesa and Kansas. So we're kind of traveling all over the place, do some hiking some sights. Yay! <laughs> While others returned home Wednesday to spend time with family. We're getting the whole family together, a really large family, so we're excited. It's the first time that my siblings have been back to Illinois in six years. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And while some people will be catching flights, it'll also be a busy day out on the road. According to AAA, approximately 48.3 million people will be traveling. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. The Thanksgiving celebrations started a little early at one Rockford organization. Rockford Rescue Mission served its turkey banquet today. Volunteers helped dish out all the traditional fixings to go. Winter weather gear, hygiene products, and prayer opportunities were also available to those in need. This is the 57th year the mission has hosted a Thanksgiving meal. Recipients say they're thankful to have somewhere to spend the holiday. This is what Thanksgiving is about, um, the sharing, caring, and uh, building relationships and companionships with one another and uh, a common bond um, with our fellow neighbor. Today is a busier day for the mission, but it typically serves 250 clients per day. For volunteer opportunities, head to mystateline.com. Meanwhile, Dixon's Food Pantry receives a large Thanksgiving donation. Employees at Rainer Garage Doors raised more than $2,500 for the pantry during the company's annual week of giving. The Dixon Community Food Pantry is on West 4th Street. It's open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. As we mentioned, tonight marks the beginning of a long holiday weekend for some people. Many will reconnect with old friends at local bars. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office wants the community to have a fun and safe few days. That's why the department's doing its Safe Ride Home project. From 11 tonight to 3 tomorrow morning, those in need of a lift can call the non-emergency number. It's on your screen there, 319-6000, and a deputy will pick them up. La Monica Beverages sponsors that campaign. If you're the one doing the cooking, you've probably already started on tomorrow's Thanksgiving dinner, at least part of it. And if you're not an expert chef, just know a lot could go wrong in the kitchen and with more than just the food. Nikel Delgado caught up with the Rockford Fire Department to discuss cooking safety. She's here now with some tips. Nikel. Well, Eric, let's be honest here. Many of us will probably be up super early starting on that Thanksgiving dinner. And that's why I talked to Rockford Fire Department to get some safety tips so they don't show up at your house for the holiday. Take your time, uh, prepare out the meal, don't rush, and, uh, and follow all the instructions, and, and you can be very safe and very effective in cooking your, preparing your holiday dinner. Whether it's deep frying your turkey or making gravy on the stove, the Rockford Fire Department's number one tip is never leave cooking food unattended. 46% of uh, residential fires are due to cooking um, mistakes. Inspector Jason Vivero says there are many ways a fire can start while cooking. Loose clothes or or sleeves could get too close to a flame or a kitchen towel. He recommends keeping a pan lid nearby to put out any small fires, along with keeping a fire extinguisher in the kitchen. Be careful when you're cooking with, with oil, uh, hot grease, it can flare up very easily. A lot of times people do make the mistake of trying to extinguish the fire with water, so make sure that uh, you don't do that because that can make the flames even grow much quicker. Accidents do happen. That's why Division Chief Matt Knott reminds everyone to make sure your smoke alarm and carbon monoxide detectors are working. Keeping everyone involved can help in preventing a holiday fire. Uh, you know, everybody wants to help and pitch in and, and, and do so and divide and conquer and, and you can prepare a holiday meal very safe and very effectively. 
If you haven't taken that turkey out of the freezer yet, don't even try to fry it tomorrow because it won't defrost in time. Once it hits that oil, it will explode. For more tips on on this story, find it on mystateline.com. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, it was a warmer one this afternoon, but felt a little cool out there with that southerly breeze. But temperatures today made it into the mid and upper 50s. Those numbers will stay actually fairly uh, steady here as we go through this evening. The winds this evening, not as gusty as what they were earlier today, still coming in from the south, but that wind speed coming down just a bit now at about 5 to 10, even up to 15 miles per hour. And that'll kind of be the trend here as we go through the rest of this evening. So that wind speed coming down. Now we've had the cloud cover and amazing that we we made it into the 50s despite those clouds that we had here for much of this afternoon. You see some showers working in and developing across central Illinois back to the west. We're starting to see a little bit more saturation take place as an upper level low and a cold front move in here from the west and northwest. That cold front, that dividing line between our temperatures in the 50s, the 40s, and then eventually the 30s that we will feel come tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. Locally, our temperatures at 50 in Rockford, 54 in Janesville, 49 in Freeport, 53 for our weather watcher Bob here on the southeast end of Rockford. Now, I do think some of us are going to see a few showers here, especially to our south, once we get to about the 8, 9 o'clock hour, lasting through about 10, 11 o'clock. And you see some of those lighter scattered showers. Any more steady rainfall, though, does look to kind of set up a bit further to our south and southeast. So here, late this evening, if your travel plans do take you to the south or southeast, just know you've got a few showers to deal with, but all of that for us out of the area once we get to midnight. Temperatures are going to hold pretty steady in the 50s and the 40s through about midnight, but watch what happens to the numbers to the northwest as that cold front comes in. We start to see those temperatures drop back, and by early tomorrow morning, those numbers will be starting off in the 30s. We are also going to start our Thanksgiving Day off with a plenty of cloud cover. A couple of snowflakes up to the north possible, and I am not going to completely rule out maybe a flurry or two at least for the early part of the morning because that upper level low is still going to be to the west of us. Not going to be until about noon that it crosses over. So as that kind of comes through and we still have a little bit of that moisture around, a flurry or two will be possible, but it's going to feel a lot colder tomorrow. Temperatures then will drop back quickly as we head into tomorrow evening, 20 20s, low 30s, and then eventually we see those numbers drop back in the teens by early Friday. We will clear out tomorrow evening only to have that cloud cover come back in for Friday. Right now looks dry, but there is a boundary kind of off to the west of us, and that becomes the focus for some of these clipper systems to kind of work in around as we head towards Saturday afternoon. So temperatures are high tomorrow, reached early in the day, and then those numbers are going to drop back. So we'll hover in the 40s, ultimately tomorrow morning around 37, 38 degrees, and then that temperature falls. Wind chills too will be down in the 20s. 16 degrees tomorrow night, 34 on Friday, 41 on Saturday, stroll on state, rain, snow mix possible in the afternoon and evening, and then we've got the 40s pretty seasonal as we head into next week. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. Will Thanksgiving weekend be a turkey for the Bears and Packers, or will they each gobble up a much-needed win? So far this season, I'm 9-1 predicting Bears games. Last week right here, I picked the Ravens to beat the Bears by 3, 24-21. The Ravens did beat the Bears by 3, 16-13. I'm 8 and 3 picking Packers games this season. Last week I picked the Vikings to beat the Pack by a field goal 27-24. The Vikings beat the Pack by a field goal 34-31. Let's start with the Bears against the Lions tomorrow. Who knows where the Bears heads will be at when they take the field for this one with all the talk about Matt Nagy possibly losing his job. Will they come out and play hard for their coach? Again, the Bears won't have Akeem Hicks or Cleo Mack. They won't have Justin Fields, Allen Robinson is doubtful, Eddie Jackson is questionable, and Darnell Mooney has been dealing with a foot issue but should play. Perhaps that man Andy Dalton comes out, performs well, and saves the day. The Bears will no doubt try to establish the run game. Worked well in week four against the Lions when the Bears ran for 188 yards. David Montgomery had 106 yards and two touchdowns. Lions quarterback Jared Goff is listed as questionable with an oblique injury, so Tim Boyle might make the start again. The Lions' record is pitiful, but they've been in most of their games this season. 
This much I know their coach Dan Campbell will have them playing hard, and the Lions get fired up to win at home on Thanksgiving. The way this season is going, it only seems fitting that the Bears would become the first team to lose to the Lions. I am taking the Lions 24-20. Now for the must-see game of the weekend, the Packers hosting the Rams. Packers are catching the Rams at the wrong time. The Rams are coming off a bye, and before that they had back-to-back -back losses to the Titans and 49ers. The Rams have been seething over those losses for two weeks. The bye also has given them more time to integrate Odell Beckham Jr. into the offense. And Sean McVay, Cooper Cup, and Matthew Stafford watched the Vikings put 34 points on the board against the Packers last week. They believe they can do something similar. This will be another test to see if the Packers' defense has truly greatly improved over last year. On the Packers' side, Aaron Jones was on the practice field today, but his status is still up in the air for Sunday. Elton Jenkins will, of course, be missed on the offensive line. And Aaron Rodgers' broken pinky toe is an issue, especially when Rodgers will be trying to avoid the pass rush of Aaron Donald and Vaughn Miller. Quick passes and a strong running game will be the keys for the Packers. But in the second straight week, I'm picking against the Pack. The Rams' defense will be the difference. Rams 27, Packers 20. That's my take. We'll be right back. Candace will have one more weather check right after you hear what's coming up later on News Nation. Tonight on News Nation Prime, we continue our series Missing with a story of a teenage girl from Arkansas. We just want you to come home, no matter what's going on. Haley Shell has been missing since October. Her mom thinks she may have been coerced by human traffickers. Plus, a trafficking survivor shares her story and reveals the tactics used to manipulate victims and the shocking reason police departments don't issue Amber Alerts for runaways. That's all coming up tonight, only on News Nation Prime. That's all on the fastest growing cable news network in America. Watch News Nation on the cable and satellite stations you see here online. Head to NewsNation.com. Skies will stay cloudy for us. The first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. We've got a couple of showers moving in from the southwest, taking a little time before we see some of that reach the ground. But here in the next few hours, we'll have a few showers, especially to our south and southeast. Temperatures in the 30s tonight, only 30s tomorrow, 40s next week. Thanks, Candace, and thank you for spending time with us. Stay safe.